Hey, you, fashion disaster. Do you look like you just opened the closet and it's a boomafoo? Are you an ugly Betty? Did you waste money and become an Ellison? Say no more. With glamour, you can look half as good as I do. But what is glamour? Glamour is the act of projecting the look of a piece of equipment onto another. This will allow you to look like you're wearing an entirely different piece of gear while keeping the stats of the piece of gear you're actually wearing. Rather than looking like a neon traffic cone with a traffic cone on your head, you could look like an all-powerful wizard that blasts your enemies to bits. It just so happens the traffic cone gear is stronger because your wizard costume was bought at Spirit of Halloween. Damn, we moved to the Rising Stones yesterday. They move quick. Anyway, if you want to play with fashion, look cool while you play, look no further. I'm going to try to go over every step of the process and every detail I can. This should get you up to speed and get you ready for looking fabulous. Fashion Souls? Fashion Hunter? Fashion Fantasy 14 begins now. As a new player, you are likely to find glamour as you progress the main story. When heading to the Waking Sands, home to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, you'll end up heading through Western Thanalan, past the Aetherite in Horizon, and over to Vesper Bay. If you've not unlocked these features and you're not a newbie, well, head there now. When we reach Vesper Bay, we will have side quest unlocks, the blue quest icon. This lady on the bench, Swarmgeim, is your entry into Glamour. She has two quests. The first unlocks dies. She wants an orange juice in exchange for teaching you. If you don't have one, the vendor 10 feet away sells orange juice. The other quest she has is the ability to glamour and use the glamour dresser. Said dresser is in every inn room, and this dresser is the real way you should be using glamour. Let's start with dyes though. Dyes are simple. If you have a dye, you can color a piece of gear that color. But not all gear can be dyed. Look at the icon of your gear. In the top right of the gear icon, if there's a small colored circle, then you can dye the armor and this dot is the currently applied dye. It will change color based on whatever color the item is. Dyes are unfortunately consumable. If you use a dye to color a piece of gear, that dye is spent. If you want to dye multiple pieces of gear, you will need multiple pots of dye. Many dyes are available through NPC vendors, but some rare dyes are rarely obtainable and often only found on the market board. Glamours, meanwhile, are a bit more expansive. Rule 1. You cannot glamour stronger gear onto weaker gear. If a piece of gear is level 80 and you are wearing a level 70 piece of gear, you cannot glamour the 70 piece of gear to look like the level 80 piece. You have to just equip the level 80 piece. Which kinda makes sense, why aren't you using that better gear? Though there is an exception here with item level. If both items are level 90, either item can be glamoured onto the other regardless of item level. An i620 fry pan can be glamoured onto an i590 fry pan just fine. Rule 2. You have to be able to wear the gear. Rule restrictions and level restrictions and etc apply. You can't be a dragoon that wears white mage armor. Rule 3. Glamour prisms are consumed to cast glamour, but not the glamour itself. Glamming one item onto another does not spend that item. You keep both, but it costs a glamour prism to cast the glamour. This is part of why the glamour dresser will be extra important. Rule 4. A glamoured item will have a plus icon in the top right where dyes go. If it's this weird pink plus, the glamoured item is not dyeable. Otherwise, it will contain the color of the currently applied dye. Rule 5. You cannot use a glamoured item as a glamour. That would be three layers of glamour. An item, glamoured to be another item, that already looked like a third item. That is why we have glamoured dispeller items. Spend one dispeller to remove the glamour from an item. And again, this does not destroy either equipment piece. Rule 6. What even counts as a glamour? everything. Every gear piece is glamour. Level 1, level 90, it's all usable as glamour. If you can wear it, it counts and can be used for glamour purposes. So you got your items and you got your glamour prisms. Or do you? Do you have prisms? There's a few ways to get these. Market board, craft them. I would say the single best way to obtain these is to use your grand company. I have hundreds of prisms, all from my grand company. Once you rank up and unlock the expert delivery option, you can trade them dungeon gear for grand company seals, which means being able to buy tons of things. That's useful for a lot, 
beyond Glamour 2. Dispellers can be bought with Gil from some vendors. Likely the same one you buy Gizal Greens from. From here, all we have left to do is either right-click the item we want to Glamour, or use the Cast Glamour action under the General tab. Congrats, you can now use Glamour. In order to use an item for Glamour, you must own it and have it on your person in some way. If you want to repeatedly use an item for Glamour, then we should move to the Dresser system. Do note that in 6.4, when manually glamouring items in an in-room, items stored in the Glamour Dresser and Armoire will be options. You won't need to have the item on your person like normal, but you will need to go to an in-room. There are plans to further expand this function. To use the Dresser and Glamour plates, head to any main town, head to the local innkeep, and go into a room. There is also one of these, along with an armoire, in your squad room for your grand company. Card in the corner for a video on that feature. When opening the dresser, there are two windows. The beige one marked Glamour Dresser is the dresser's inventory, with a max of 800 items able to be stored, at least right now. They've expanded the size twice. Who knows if they'll try to increase it again. The other window is Glamour Creation. That just means selecting an item from here will put it into the dresser. You are able to hide items used in gear sets, which means you're actively using it for gear, and has a drop-down menu for checking different inventory sections. You may or may not notice some items are not available in the list, even if it isn't used in a gear set. This item? Double-check the top right of the tooltip. There are three icons. The first is Company Sigil. You can stamp your free company's logo on specific gear pieces. The second is Glamour Dresser, and the third is Armoire. If the icon is not lit up, you cannot use that feature. So if you can't find the item you want to put in the dresser, make sure it has the dresser icon. If it has the armor icon, you may want to use that before the dresser. To put an item into the Glamour Dresser, it costs one Glamour Prism each. But that's a one-time cost for infinite uses within the dresser. If you Glamour yourself 500 different times using the dresser, it still only ever costs you that one prism for that one item. You can also remove that item for free at any time. It will cost just one prism to put it back in. The armoire supersedes putting stuff into the dresser because it is free and has infinite space. The issue is only very specific gear goes into it, like event gear or super unique items that you're only ever meant to need to obtain one time. There's almost no reason not to put items in there though, as the Glamour Dresser can pull from the armoire at will, and with no Glamour Prism cost. The only exception is if you died the item, or want to die the item. The armoire will reset the item's die to default. Now comes the fun part, creating the Glamour Plates. At the moment, you can create up to 20 different Glamour Plates, but they may increase that number. Then there's also this Dispel Glamour button, lets you pick and choose what currently equipped gear you want to dispel the look of. This way you get a better preview of what you will look like per piece of gear. Pick a plate to use and throw gear into each of the slots. The same rules of glamour apply when using plates. If a piece of gear does not work for that specific class or job, the game will just ignore that piece when applying a plate. So you can put three different rolls of gear on a single plate and use it for all three different rolls, but only the applicable gear pieces will actually work. You can also place dyes on glamour plates, consuming the dye as normal. If you want to use the same gloves on three different plates, but each time have a different color of glove, you can either put three of that glove in the dresser, if possible, or dye the glove slot on each of the plates. Let's take a pair of mage gloves, for example. The plate for your red mage will dye them red, summoner will dye them purple, and black mage will have them black. Each job will use a different plate with a different die on the glove slot. Upon putting together your outfit on the plate, save it and exit the dresser. Next, go to your gear set list and right click, or hit square for controller, the gear set you want to put the plate on. Find the Link to Glamour Plate button, or the Change Glamour Plate Link button for those you've already added a plate to. Choose the plate you just made, and you're done. The next time, and every time, you put this gear set on, the Glamour Plate will be automatically applied. Glamour Plates will only apply in Sanctuaries, which is anywhere there is an Aetherite. Leave the boundaries of that town, and your chat will give you a notice that you have left the Sanctuary. Out there, Plates will not apply. They've also already expanded this too. It used to only be in main towns, like Uldah or Limsa, so maybe one day Plates will work anywhere. 
but that's unlikely. As you can see here though, I'm constantly swapping between gear sets. My Dragoon and Reaper use the same base gear, but completely different glamours. While in the Sanctuary, it is seamlessly swapping back and forth. I walk even one step out of town? Oops, my Dragoon now looks like my Reaper. You'll need to collect a lot of glamour prisms if you end up wanting a full dresser's worth of gear for glamour. It's absolutely worth abusing the dresser as much as you can, since it is still far less of a cost than any manual glamour. You'll still need to keep some items on you at all times due to not being allowed in the dresser or armoire, but those are few and far between, essentially just being relic weapons. For those, you can also just finish them and buy a replica. Those can go into the dresser. But there's a relatively new fashion piece that isn't directly tied to glamour. Under the character menu button is the fashion accessories menu. Bottom right, there's a notice about how these work. You can have a fashion accessory umbrella automatically apply itself in the applicable areas when it is raining. It adds depth to RP and just general character actions. Otherwise, you can use one of these at a time to just add some flair. You can only really use these in town for now. At the time of this video, hitting Z, unsheathing your weapon, will just remove the accessory. However, come patch 6.4, you will be able to wear wings and glasses in combat. Umbrellas, obviously not, as you need those hands to combat. But if it is hands-free, well, enjoy. It's a permanent part of your glamour ability now. Well, until you go into a duty. But maybe one day, even in duties, you can wear wings. But that day is not anytime soon. Finally, we have one last piece you could consider glamour. Your adventure plate and portraits. They're under the same character menu button near the top. The adventurer plate can be customized in a number of ways. This is a fast way to give your own extra self-expression of who you are or who your character is. First in the menu options given is Edit Portrait. I'm going to pass over this because the portraits option is 99% the same info, so I'll go over it with that. Just know you can make a portrait here for your plate. Secondly, we have Edit Plate Design. Alright, you have one drop down with a large list of presets, okay, okay. What's this advanced settings? Oh. The amount you can customize with this is huge. Play around with each of the elements and see what you can make. The more you play, the more customization you can obtain. My plate uses stuff from Ultimate Raid Clearing. If you see something in a shop called a Framers Kit, it's something for this feature. Edit Profile is how you fill out most of the info for the plate. Can pick a specific class or job as your favorite, a favorite title, and what kind of play you focus on. Can pick up the six of those. At the bottom, you can pick what hours you tend to be active. Or you can make a random pattern. Like spell a word, or... Is this loss? Edit search comment is a thing that has existed since the beginning of the game. However, your plate will contain it as well. Describe yourself, make a joke, or whatever you like. Just make sure it falls within TOS. Privacy settings is for who you let see your plate. If for whatever reason you only want friends to be able to see your plate, you can select it. Or maybe you don't want a plate at all. Set it to no one and it will basically not exist. It does exist, but since nobody else can see it... But otherwise, select a player and you can look at their plate if they allow it. And others can look at yours. Finally is the help option. This basically is everything we went over or will go over. But make note of the precautions. Using Fantasia resets your portrait for your plate. Then also they warn you to follow the TOS, or risk being reported for a rude or obscene plate. Now for your portrait. Once again, we can customize the design with different accents and frames. The character tab is where the main meat is though. You can change your pose, your expression during the pose, the lighting, zoom and angle. This is a whole mode in itself. Again, play with the settings and try to get everything just how you like it. There are some restrictions with needing to see the character's face, but you can create a lot of different things. Make sure to note the buttons under the portrait too. The pause button isn't just for show. You must pause the motion of your pose in order for you to fully save it. It's a photo, not a video. Getting a specific frame if you're using a pose with movement? Good luck. There is no frame advance. Also note that there are two zoom options. If I spam the scroll wheel over the portrait, the zoom will move in and out but the zoom bar under the portrait will remain stationary. 
These are two different zoom options. Now to the portrait menu itself. On the left is a list of portraits that you've never made. Well, that's because these aren't portraits. Well, they are, but these are your gear sets. Each of these is a gear set, their item level and the attached portrait. Every gear set comes with a portrait by default. Notice how when you enter a duty, if you never turn it off, you get a big UI element with everyone's portraits? And you look like you're at the DMV, and your soul is leaving your body as you suffer, knowing you'll have to repeat this several hour long process in a few more years as your body starts to crumble under the weight of the stress of living in this place? Yeah, well, this is where you change that. Also be sure in the bottom right to set Instant Portrait to ON. Portraits shown at duty start are instant portraits, so without it on, you will still be stuck at the DMV. Further, instant portraits are just like glamour plates. If you are not in a sanctuary, it will not apply correctly. Right-clicking or hitting square, you can edit, import settings from another portrait, import the portrait from your plate, apply this portrait to your plate, or revert to default. Editing your portrait, it's all the same stuff as on the plate. All the same options, controls, etc. Just now, it will apply to a gear set. It applying to a gear set also comes with some extra restrictions and issues. That is, changing gear. If you see this yellow warning sign, it is probably a gear issue. Changing a gear at all can break a portrait due to how things work in the back end. So anytime you update your gear or even glamour, double check your portrait too. You may need to quick pop in to edit just to immediately save. There may be other minor details to go over, like how certain equipment pieces can hide accessories, or how there's the Emperor's new groove set from Tartaroga in Mordona. Though you'll have to have a level 15 crafter and do a pair of quests from Whiskered. Both are super easy to do, so it is basically a free unlock. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. That aside, I think that's it. The rest is up to you. Become a more fashionable player with these elements. And remember... The Sheba hat is S tier. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy your glamour adventures. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Patreon. Support is always appreciated. Otherwise, I'll cut it there. Thanks for watching, keep on keeping on. Take care, and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to. Amen Al Khatib. Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Rice, Fergie, Ethan W, Frazier97, Henny G, James Hall, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thank you all for watching. See you for the next one.